just because it's too old. But we figured out we had a quorum anyway, so that was good. They want more money from you. We do or don't? We do. We, do. We, we had live. one before you came, even. Oh, okay. <coughs> so we are live. <coughs> okay. Okay, well, let's um, call the meeting to order for the evening. We'll start with the approval of the agenda and minutes. I so move. It's been moved to approve the agenda and minutes as presented. Is there a second? Okay. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Okay. 20% through. All right. New business. Gary and Janet Johansson, variance for relief from the Cook County Subdivision Ordinance, number 50, section 3.3, .3, to recreate a non-conforming lot in the FAR 3 Zone District at 97 Peninsula Point Trail. Get the details and see what we'll add to that. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you got Can that. We okay. Have that up? Um, got it. Question? Yeah, there's feedback. It was my. I, I heard that. Okay. <laughs> I think I got it now. And I thought, who's talking? It's. I, I'm not now. <laughs> that mic. I just know from experience. <laughs> An endless trail of words. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Parcel ID 27 145 0050 97 Peninsula Point Trail. Um, Neva. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicants, Gerald and Janet Johansson, are requesting relief from the minimum lot size requirements to allow the recreation of a non conforming lot at 97 Peninsula Point Trail in Lutzen. In 2016, 97 Peninsula Point Trail was combined with 94 Peninsula Point Trail at the property owner's request according to the Cook County Assessor's Records. Both of these lots are now under one parcel ID. The applicant's request is to separate these lots so they can be individually owned and se sold separately. Since both of these lots were under separate parcel IDs previous to 2016, the applicants are requesting to re-separate them and sell them separately. The inland lot is 3.102 acres in the FAR 3 zone district, which has a minimum lot size requirement of 5 acres. Therefore, the inland lot cannot meet the conforming lot size standards and cannot be administratively separated from the existing parcel. The lake lot at 94 Peninsula Point Trail is in the LSR zone district, which has a 1 acre minimum and is conforming. As a standalone parcel, 97 Peninsula Point Trail would be 3.102 acres in a five acre minimum zone district. Please refer to the zoning map at the bottom of page four. Um, considerations, both of these lots have been developed since the 1990s. Each lot has its own address, driveway, primary dwelling, and septic system. It is likely that when the property owners combined the lots into one parcel in 2016 that they were unaware of the restrictions for separating them in the future. The inland and north lot is not a lot of record. If it were a lot of record, it would have been allowed to have been separated administratively in accordance with section 9.03 of the zoning ordinance. I believe that's all I have to add, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, it's been presented. Is there anyone here representing the interest of this request to yes. speak to it uh, can you step forward to oh there's a microphone there uh, and give us your name and address We need to separate the property on one side of the road from the property that's on the lakeside 
uh, across the road. Okay. And uh, the 97 Peninsula Point Trail is where our home is right now. Well, we're intending to sell that. And uh, we need to separate the 97 from the 94. Right. And uh, the 94 is on the lakeside. Right. Okay. And um, I, that that's basically what we. Uh, okay. Are no, no, nothing more to add to it. It's pretty straightforward and clear. So, yep. um, we'll open the floor then to anybody else that might have comments on this particular issue. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this issue? Hearing none, I'll move forward and take the question to the board, and we will consider it. If we have further questions, we'll direct them to you okay. okay board opinions I'm familiar with both properties okay and I'm familiar with the fact that they were individual properties for a long long time and the one on the uh, lakeside was their first the second one um, I believe when the Johansons wanted to retire they bought that so that they could build uh, another home, a year-round home. And um, I don't know how the combination happened. Sometimes the, the assessor's office just puts them together without anyone even knowing it. Um, so I think they should be separate and would be in favor of allowing the variance. Okay, anybody else on the board? I, I, I don't see any problem with it being done. Um, the lot inland is yeah. larger than a lot of the other lots that are inland as it is, too. <laughs> it appears they both have their advantages. One's on the lake and one's bigger. Um, well, I mean, bigger than the <laughs> other properties next to it. Yeah. Right, with right. the housing situation up here, we should be fighting it. Okay, make well. Make a motion we approve the variance request. I'll, I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve the variance as proposed to us with the condition attached. Is there a second? It's been seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll assume we're ready to proceed to the vote on this. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. You're all set to go. All right. It's done. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. There are homes on both places. Oh, yeah. So, and working well, I, it would I, be I, difficult. I'm, to I'm down there three days a week. I get to oh. see that all the time. Okay. Uh, okay. Number B. <laughs> Letter B. Gennard Brown, variance against request for relief from Cook County Zoning Ordinance number. 37 section 7.5 to replace the existing legal non-conforming principal structure with a new principal structure to reduce shoreline setback where a minimum of 100 feet is required at 89 Moose Ridge Road on property adjacent to Poplar Lake. Property identification number 52-480-0080. Neva. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant, Gaynard Brown, is requesting relief from the shoreline setback standards to place a new cabin on the property at 89 Moose Ridge Road as a replacement to the existing cabin. The existing 500 square foot cabin was constructed in 1965. The proposed new structure would be a two-story cabin, 768 square feet on the lower level, 586 square feet on the upper level, with 160 square foot of exterior decks and porch. The two-story structure is proposed to not exceed 26 feet in height. The new structure is proposed to be placed 33 feet from the shoreline of Poplar Lake at its closest point. This property is part of, part of the Moose Ridge Plat, a 23-acre parcel plat approved in 1991. The purpose of the plat was to resolve discrepancies in legal descriptions of existing lots. No new lots were created. Moose Ridge Road is a private road. The applicant's lot is located along a very narrow area of the peninsula and is one of the smallest lots within the plat at 0.3 acres. A review of variances granted within Moose Ridge Platte found 13 variances have been requested between 10 lots within the Platte. 12 of those 13 variances have been granted. 
Variance relief for structure placement generally ranges between 50 and 75 feet from the shoreline. The neighboring property at 87 Moose Ridge Road received a variance in 2016 to modify the existing cabin, which allowed for a second story. Reflecting the Moose Ridge development's long presence in Cook County, most of its cabins were constructed prior to shoreline and other setback restrictions. Uh, the closest point of the existing dwelling to the Poplar Lake shoreline is 27 feet. A unique feature of the Brown property is that it has two shoreline components since on the narrow part of the peninsula. The applicant purchased this parcel in 1994 and two variances have been approved on this variance since he's purchased it. In 2019, a variance from the shoreline and Moose Ridge Road setbacks allowed for the construction of a 224 square foot storage structure. And then last year, Mr. Brown received a variance to add a 253-square-foot entryway and attached uh, deck onto the existing cabin. Uh, considerations. After further evaluation of last year's variance approval, the applicant would like to explore a teardown rebuild option instead of the additions to the existing structure as approved in 2021. The applicant explains in his variance application that the existing structure is too small for full-time residency and building a larger one-story structure is not feasible to due to the small lot size. This new proposed location of the new cabin would place the structure five feet further from Poplar Lake. The existing cabin is 27 feet from shoreline. The proposed cabin would be 33 feet from shoreline. Additionally, compared to the 2021 variance approval, the cabin would be five feet further from the closest neighboring property line. The 2021 variance approved the cabin 21 feet from the property line. The proposed cabin would be 26 feet from the property line. The applicant has given consideration to applying design standards to lessen the overall impact of the new cabin, such as using neutral colored building materials and shingles. It is preferable to protect and re or restore the shore impact zone where possible. The shore impact zone is defined as 50% of the structure setback, in this case being a 50 foot shoreline buffer. The new cabin, new proposed cabin would restore five feet to the shore impact zone. If approved, the following conditions may be attached to this request. Number one, the property shall conform to Minnesota Rule 7080 and Cook County septic requirements. Number two, no vegetation shall be removed from the shore Im shoreline impact zone. Number three, no component of the roof may, extend, may exceed 26 feet in elevation. Number four, no component of proposed construction may be closer than 33 feet from the waterline of Poplar Lake. Number five, a gutter or catchment system or vegetation conducive to water retention shall be included on all new or proposed structures to divert precipitation and snow melt away from Poplar Lake. And number six, the cabin shall be earth toned or neutral in color. Our office sent out 13 letters of notification to adjacent property owners and we received one comment from the Cook County Soil and Water Conservation District, which is enclosed in this packet. I also received one late comment that was received after the deadline that's not included with the packets. Okay, thank you, Neva. All right, proceeding to the floor. Is there a representative of this issue? Okay, go ahead. Uh, pro proceed to the microphone. State your name. Gaynard Brown, 89 Moose Ridge Road. Okay. Uh, and do you have further comment to add to the uh, narrative that's been presented here? <coughs> Um, maybe a follow up with any questions that you may have. Yeah, in, in as, a, as we proceed, even after we've closed the floor, uh, if we have questions, we'll certainly present them. Right. I, th I think Neva did a very nice job explaining exactly what I was what I was trying to do here. I think one of the nice things I feel good about this project is that I am giving back five feet back. I know that it's a small lot, <coughs> but it it is it, the impervious. Uh, footage is would be the same as it would have been with the, my prior variants so I'm not adding any more you know structure to create more impervious condition and being able to move it back five feet away from the lake I, I would actually even prefer to move it back further but I have a septic tank yeah. in an outhouse and another building where I'm not going to be able to move it any further back from the lake than what it what I'm proposing okay so Okay, very good. Board, have any questions on that? All right. Well, we'll open the floor to anybody else who may wish to comment on this issue. Is there anybody else that has an interest or comment on this? Hearing none, we'll proceed to remove this from the floor and to the board for consideration. Board members, comment. Seems like a reasonable request. 
and if a person wants to continue improving property, I think it's necessary for a lot like this. And okay. it's it's modest and not 4,000 square feet. Yeah. I, I agree with it. I mean, it's got a, a legal septic system and it's, that's what's required. Okay, Ed? I agree with everything we, Judy said. We seem to have some consent here. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the variance. With Adam the has made the motion to approve I'll with the conditions it. attached. Is I'll there a second? Se I'll second it. It's been seconded. I have one question. Yes. Does the other variance go away with the awarding of this variance? I would think yes, because the first variance was based on the current structure. So okay. this, is, this one's a tear down rebuild. So okay. I think, well, I think that he would have the two options. So he, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but he could proceed with the last year's variance, which is to do the additions onto the existing cabin, because that still stands, or he could proceed with this variance. Do you I'm see just curious. <laughs> or Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Machbacher, you could, <clears throat> you could offer up a, uh, a friendly uh, amendment uh, requiring or a condition onto the uh, approval that the previous variance uh, then be uh, eliminated. And if the property owner agrees to it, then it should be no problem. Okay. I can't amend it. Adam and Mike need to do it. Um, so I'll redraw my. Um, well, you, you, I think you're going to accept an amendment. You can you? amend your, yeah. your motion. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll amend it to that. To okay. That. It has been moved to amend the original condition to include, uh, can we have a read back on that? Well, it would just to be remove. including the elimination of the 2021 okay. variants. All right. As stated. Um, Mike this has to second the amendment. What's that? I'll Make second it. it. He, okay, <laughs> that, that, that's and what I was to waiting be agreeable for. agreeable to the property owner. The, 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 this is uh, uh, simply an amendment that we're voting on. So, um, okay. all those in favor of the amendment to approve the amendment and modify the order signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, the original motion has been modified. Uh, do you have any concerns about that as a property owner? No. Okay. No. There are no concerns acknowledged by the property owner. Is there anything further that the board wishes to consider on it? Hearing none, we'll proceed to close that and we'll go to the vote. All those in favor of the modified uh, petition, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. You ready to go? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, now, Dennis and Jolita Ristall, variance request for relief from Cook County Zoning Ordinance Number 37, Section 7.14, place a new principal structure at a reduced top of Bluff Sitback, where a minimum of 30 feet is required at XX Old, Old Glen Drive. On a property within the North Shore Management Zone. Property identification number 25064-0117. Niva. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicants, Dennis and Jolita Rizdal, are requesting relief from the Bluff Setback Standards to place a new house on the property on Lot 17, Block 1, within the Johannes Tofte Homestead Sites Plan in Tofte. The proposed new structure would be a two-story walkout uh, with attached garage. The final height, um, I think, will be clarified by the applicant tonight. We had some follow-up discussion since my staff report was written, so that information will be clarified here shortly. The new structure will be proposed to be placed 14 feet from the top of Bluff Setback. This structure, or the property, is within the North Shore Management Plan area boundary, which is classified as Shoreland Area to Lake Superior Corridor. Since the property falls within the Shoreland Area, the steep slope on the south side of the property qualifies as a bluff, the setback to which is 30 feet from the top of Bluff. 
One unique aspect of this variance request is that it appears as though previous zoning de determinations on neighboring properties did not correctly apply the shoreline standards. Uh, it appears that platting in 1998 as well as land use permits issued for neighboring properties at 90, 96, and 102 Hoagland Drive between 2005 and 2008 did not identify these properties within the North Shore Management Plan area boundary. Therefore, three developed properties adjacent to this property all have been developed with land use permits within the bluff setback without variances. In 1998, the 1998 plat does include an analysis from Wayne Seidel with Cook SWCD identifying the steep slope and is concerned with development. Ultimately, there is no formal restriction set in the final plat for development on the slope. However, the top of bluff setback would be aligned with Mr. Seidel's proposed no construction zone. See the timeline for further detail. Um, I have a timeline. I'm not going to read through that. Um, it's basically just trying to explain the relationship between the North Shore Management Plan area boundary and certain permitting in this area. Um, so now on the background of the North Shore Management Plan area boundary, uh, due to its many unique characteristics, Lake Superior has its own management plan and shoreland boundary, which have been established since 1988. The North Shore Management Plan establishes a shoreline standards for Lake Superior and the North Shore Management Board is the entity responsible for monitoring compliance of the plan. In inland lakes, the shoreland area is either the area that's 300 feet from a river or 1,000 feet from a lake. However, along Lake Superior Corridor, the North Shore Management Zone is the shoreland area that is determined by unique jurisdictional boundary. The North Shore Management Plan area boundary is defined along the 40-acre subdivision lines of the rectangular coordinate coordinate system established by the U.S. Public Land Survey, nearest to the landward side of the 1,000 feet from the shoreline of Lake Superior or 300 feet landward from the center line of Highway 61, whichever is greater. This boundary was established by, by this method primarily as a means to ease administration of the shoreland rules. The applicant has included language uh, in his application that is from the statement of need and reasonableness, basically when the legislator created these rules, what their intent was. Um, so that's in the applicant's application. The structure location as proposed would encroach on the bluff impact zone as defined in section 2.10 of the zoning ordinance as a bluff and land located within 20 feet from the top of bluff. The bluff impact zone has a higher level of development protection in the zoning ordinance. I have included the bluff area standards for your reference in the staff narrative. The considerations Although zoning interpretations have been incorrectly applied to neighboring properties, those errors don't set a precedence for current staff to administratively vary from the ordinance requirements. It is appropriate to recognize those errors have been made and moving forward consider the development already completed as grandfathered in. It is also appropriate to use this information in the analysis of the variance since the character of the locality is a criteria for reviewing variance requests. If approved, the following conditions may be attached to this variance. Number one, the property shall conform to Minnesota Rule 7080 and Cook County septic requirements. Number two, no component of the roof may exceed 20 feet in elevation. This condition could be reconsidered once we clarify the actual height of the structure with the applicant here shortly. And number three, a gutter or catchment system or vegetation conducive to water retention shall be included on all new or proposed structures to divert precipitation and snow melt away from the bluff. Our office sent out 18 letters of notification to adjacent property owners. We received six comments by the comment deadline. Uh, there was one comment that was opposed to the request, and the remaining comments were in support of request. Uh, looks like four comments in support. Then the North Shore Management Board also provided a comment. Um, the comment opposed to the request was primarily a comment about following uh, s rules very strictly, which we all know the variance process is here to look at properties and identify practical difficulties. Um, and the North Shore Management Board's comment was uh, kind of, well, it's included in your, in your letter. I'll let you guys take that, what it is. And uh, we received one comment after the comment deadline that was not included in your packets. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, I presume you're uh, ready to address us on the issue? I am. All right. <laughs> Proceed. Uh, name first. Uh, Dennis Rizdal, and my address is 20 Temperance Landing Road in Schroeder. Okay, and thanks, I don't think an address has been assigned to the property in question yet. So, um, yeah, well, Neva did a very pretty thorough job of explaining the situation. I guess I, I want to bring attention to just a couple of areas. Um, it's my understanding, and I think Tim could help us with this, that the, um, 
the way this interpretation of the boundaries of the North Shore management area have been interpreted in the past couple decades relate not only to the three neighboring properties here, but I think we're enforced that way by the last couple, at least, zoning administrators. Tim, does that seem? Well, I'll, I'll leave that up to the chair. Do you want me to address that? Uh, yeah, if you can, Tim, go ahead. Okay, um, <coughs> it's, what it is, it's just been a, uh, an interpretation by uh, some staff members that were not uh, vetted all the way through the department. So it was just an uh, off the cuff uh, sort of interpretation that didn't take into consideration the full, because it was so far away. It meant, obviously, if you look at the boundaries, it, it goes beyond the 1,000 feet from Lake Superior. It goes beyond the 300 feet from uh, the uh, Highway 61. So it's outside of those parameters. But because of the jagged sawtooth uh, uh, boundary level of the North Shore Management Zone, it falls within that. And so, um, you know, it's it, it, it wasn't an official, uh, any kind of uh, official determination that those things would be okay to do, but it was in, in, in determination that was made by the current staff at the time that issued those permits and things. Okay. So what kind of happens then is you, like many property owners, when we look at a lot, we look at the neighboring properties and we assume that the um, siting of those um, um, would, would be indicative of how we might site ours and those were all sited um, closer to the to the bluff setback than um, than the 30 feet um, I, Neva directed me toward the statement of need and reasonableness that was um, filed by I guess it would have been the DNR at the time that the North Shore management plan was was adopted and my understanding of it is that every new set of regulations requires a statement of need and reasonableness um, is that correct Neva or Tim do you know yeah but the baseline uh, does when you're when you're doing statutes or you're creating this this is basically I think it was already mentioned the we have the shoreland Minnesota rules DNR 60, uh, 6120 govern all the shoreland activities of all the inland lakes in 6021 the Minnesota rules it sets aside the lakeshore of, of uh, Lake Superior specific to the North Shore Management Plan, which is up to the North Shore Management Board to generate, create, and modify that plan as is. And, and that's when the, the sonar was done, it's at the beginning of that, um, which was, a, I believe, 89? I think that's right, yeah. When that was originally created. So the plan itself doesn't really go into the um, the underlying rationale um, um, that resulted in kind of the 40 acre zigzagging but that's spelled out more clearly in the sonar so uh, with your permission I'd like to read just a short section of that the planning area extends from the shoreland planning area extends from the shoreline of Lake Superior and includes the minimum 1,000 foot shoreline jurisdiction established in MS 105.485, but also extends to include the Highway 61 corridor. Highway 61 is the primary critical transportation link and it traverses the entire planning corridor. The board believes that the proper management of the shoreland of Lake Superior must include Highway 61 because of the effects of Highway 61 on the shoreline and vice versa. Highway 61 dramatically impacts the shoreland corridor and directly affects land use within the planning area. They are closely interwoven and it's important from an administrative or enforcement standpoint to manage the shoreland and the highway corridor as a single management unit. Then it goes on to say, to ease administration and enforcement of the plan, it was decided that the legal description of the landward extent of the planning area would extend from the ordinary high water level of Lake Superior to the nearest 40 acre subdivision lines, um, at least to the point 300 feet lakeward of Highway 61 or one 
thousand feet from Lake Superior. Um, so what they're saying here is, as I read it, is the intent is to is to be able to um, control development 1,000 feet back from the lake um, and or 300 feet inland from the highway center line, whichever is greater. However, this plan being developed, I think, in 87, um, I think it's understandable, as I wrote in my narrative in my um, application, as to why they, um, why they made this additional change for the administrative um, convenience. Because at that time, there just weren't uh, easily available tools um, to measure 1,000-foot setbacks from the shoreline um, because we didn't have satellite mapping technology yet. So to literally measure that would be next to impossible. So what that provision allowed is it allowed planning staff to simply go by the, um, the s legal description of the property, essentially, and not have to do the measurement. Um, then I want to go now to the letter that the North Shore Management Board submitted, which I think is the last mm -hmm. item in your packet, probably. And I'll start reading just in the second sentence of the second paragraph. While within the North Shore Management Board zone, staff recognizes the site location is significantly distant from North Shore Management Board zone defining buffer areas. Those dis defining buffer areas, they say, are 1,000 feet from the shoreline, 600 feet from the center line of Highway 61, which I think is maybe in air. I think it was 300 feet. But um, because our site is 1,600 feet from the shoreline and 970 from the highway center line, respectively. Um, and then I'll just, um, then they, uh, they say they go on to recognize that the character of the neighborhood has been already been developed with similar setbacks and this would be consistent with that. Plus, the impact of our building would be mitigated relative to our neighbors because we're planning on building a much, a building that's, that um, is, has much lower elevation relative to the existing grade. So it, it, it's for the above mentioned reason that the North Shore Management Board considers the granting of this variance if chosen by the Board of Adjustment wouldn't be against the spirit of North Shore Management Board policies. So uh, if you look at, um, I think, in um, toward the end of, of uh, Nava's um, packet, there's a, there's a kind of a map document that looks like this. And it shows how the defined area of the North Shore Management Plan zigzags up the shore. Um, and it shows that relative to where the 1,000-foot setback is, which is the heavy black dashed line, and the 300-foot setback from the highway, which is the, the straighter and smaller dashed line. Um, so you can see that the parcel in question now is kind of the upper right-hand one. Um, and um, then there's a parcel I think is mostly Forest Service land below and to the left of that. And then you get to another parcel um, to the left of that where um, the, none of it is included in the North Shore Management area because the south, southerly, southeasterly most tip of that 40 doesn't happen to cross one of those boundaries. But looking at, at our site, there's a note here. The 40-acre parcel in which our lot is included, of that 0 0.09 acres is within the 1,000-foot setback, so about 2%, just over 2% of it. So by creating a simpler way to administer the plan back before the kind of ma accurate mapping tools were available, what was created with something that, that establishes a really arbitrary um, um, set of regulations as it affects landowners with similar um, distances back from the lake. And, um, 
as the North Shore Management Board's letter explains, being 1,600 feet back, we, we, we meet the, the spirit or the, in, the original intent of the plan, but because of the way the administrative um, um, provision was, um, we don't meet the letter of it. Um, so it would seem to me that since it's been um, enforced this way for some time here, and it's become kind of the, um, the assumed um, um, rule that the spirit of the plan will be um, will be what's um, enforced in Cook County and not the letter of it. And now that there's easy technologies available, for, I downloaded for a free app online that shows me exactly how far my site is from the lake, and it's easy to do that. That, and given the North Shore Management Board's concurrence that 1,000 feet is really the intent, um, I wonder if it wouldn't be wise in the long run for planning and zoning to approach the North Shore Management Board and just ask if if it's um, acceptable to them and maybe you'd have to go to the DNR. And now that we can easily define where a thousand feet is and 300 feet from the highway, can we from this point force forward enforce it that way and do so in, in you know, exact accordance with the, um, with the plan. Um, so anyway, that's, we, we would like the variance so we can build it. There's another page in here that's um, one page forward yet, um, looks like this. And it shows where our building site is relative to the three building sites that are already built. And these are the only four lots that really have um, a, a bluff in um, forward of what would be the logical building zone, I think. I, I'm not sure that that's been looked at I guess there are bluff zones in some of the other lots, so maybe that's not the case. But of the lots that have the relatively flat plateau on the northern, northerly section, and then the steeper drop in front of them, this would be the fourth and last of those to de be developed, and it would be developed consistently with how the, the three next door have been. <coughs> so that's our a request and the, uh, kind of a rationale for that. And any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, Dennis. <coughs> um, are there any further questions from the board on that? I have a couple. One is, are you intending to cut the trees in front of the place? Well, that's an interesting question because the whole, unfortunately, this lot has very few trees of quality. It's mostly dead and dying birch and, and um, aspen and even the spruce which we marked ahead of time so that we, they could be surveyed and avoided as much as possible in terms of site, the, the building improvements be um, retained but even those are are um, according to our association president have spruce budworm problems and they're hoping to extend the life of them with some treatment um, so the majority of the deciduous trees are are either dead or partially dead, like many of the older stands of, of birch in, in the county. Um, so we we certainly want to remove some of those. When we w when this was prepared and we left, the leaves weren't on the trees yet. And I just got back last night, and I haven't got a chance up to go up there and really see. But we'd like to remove a lot of the tree, the dead trees and the ones that are mostly dead. And we'd like to do that more than one tree at a time because it gets really expensive to remove one every time yeah. one falls. But we also have an aggressive replanting plan to add six and eight foot conifers and two and two and a half inch caliper um, deciduous trees because we'd prefer to have a healthier um, forest around us, but we simply don't. Yeah. The other question I have, Dennis, is the height of the building. Yeah, so our design has a relatively flat roof. It's a, it rises over the whole length of the building only four feet. So it's uh, maybe 8% or something. 
and it sunk a, a one level down. Mm -hmm. um, so measured according to the the way building height is defined in the ordinance, we would be under 20 feet. Um, how many feet? Under 20 feet. Okay. Whereas 35 is is um, allowed. Right. Now what? I had my architect look at that today so I could, because Nave and I talked about the fact that if something gets added as a condition, we don't want to end up being six inches higher than that. And so he took six points around the building and measured down to grade from each of those, and then averaged all those and came up with just short of 18 feet. So I think that the 20 foot that's suggested in, in the considerations would be, would be adequate would for work. us. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Any other questions? Is there any way you can move it back and be do the same thing? What we're trying to accomplish is to have a building that walks in at the at the upper level, and then walks out at the lower level. So we need to get to a point where there's enough, just enough grade to accomplish that, and. As we push it back, it gets flatter. So we'd have to elevate the, the upper level to get the lower level um, lake site out of, out of the, the basement. Plus there's a, a kind of a naturally occurring swale behind it and we'd be moving back into that swale, which we'd rather not disturb if we pushed it back farther. Okay. Adam? <coughs> I, I'm, I like that the height isn't going to exceed 20 feet from grade, and it gives them some wiggle room too, and looks about like the most practical spot for him to build on the lot too, because of the topography. So that's all I really have to say. Okay. Yeah. It, it, the detail looking at this seems to kind of drive you to where you're at. Uh, I don't. Uh, there, there seems to be no question from us on that basis. Um, with that, Mr. Chair. Yes, Tim. Just a small point of order. Um, you hadn't asked for any other public comment. I don't. Oh, oh, that oh okay. Is any, good, good, to. good point. Um, <laughs> let's let's fulfill that. Is there any other person in the room that wishes to speak to this issue? Okay, hearing none, I will assume that there is no further comment and we will pull this back to the board for its consideration. All right, now back to our point here. Um, it, 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 like I say, I, from my standpoint, it looks like a, a solution that simply de defines itself as you look at the layout. Um, is there a motion on this order? I move we approve the variance request. With the conditions With the as conditions stated. that have okay. been suggested, the 20 foot, the septic. Okay, it has been moved with the conditions expressed. Is there a second? I'll second it. It has been seconded. Is there any further discussion on the matter? Hearing none, I'll assume we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the proposal, as proposed, with the conditions attached, say so by signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Dennis, you got job. All right, thank you very much. Even Tim, thank you as well. Mm -hmm. Appreciate all your assistance on this. Thank you. All right. Is that something we should look into? Because it seems that this <coughs> has the North Shore Management Board looked at this and mm. determined that this is how they want to rule? It, it, well, um, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Machenbacher, the, uh, the North Shore Management Board, we've, we've gone through <coughs> several uh, updates since, since I've been here. Um, and each of the time that's come up as a discussion because nobody's really comfortable with that that definition it just is wonky the way that it's applied because some some property makes sense being in some doesn't make sense um, and <clears throat> each of the times it was intentionally left as it was 
Um, now, I will say that we are starting to enter into another planning process. We did have a North Shore Management Board meeting last week, and um, one of the points of discussion, not even relative to this case, um, we just started talking about issues that we want to highlight as potential uh, modifications uh, within the plan. The boundary lines uh, is it rose to the top of, of you okay. know, one of those particular issues. So it is going to be uh, probably, and I, I, I actually, if I had any gift of prophecy, I would, I would think that indeed we, we will uh, be looking to probably get in line with the DNR's 1,000 uh, foot, 300 foot okay. uh, measurement. Thank you. Okay, thank you again very much. Okay. All right, last item. Eric Peterson, variance request for relief from Cook County Zoning Ordinance number 37, again, section 7.14, to place a new principal structure at a reduced top of bluff setback where a minimum of 30 feet is required at 24 Chimney Rock Road on property adjacent to Lake Superior within the North Shore Management Zone. Property identification number 56-245-0108. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant, Mr. Peterson, is requesting relief from the top of bluff setback standards to place a new house on the property at 24 Chimney Rock Road. The house would be within the bluff impact area, 16.5 feet from the top of bluff at its nearest point. The applicant has positioned the house that only one corner encroaches on the setback. The applicant explains in his application that although there are conforming locations to build meeting the bluff setback on the lot, those locations would place the building over 100 feet from Lake Superior. The application also suggests that the or orientation of the lot on Chicago Bay decreases the availability of a view of Lake Superior and that meeting the setbacks would, decrease, uh, would increase the noise from Highway 61. The structure location as proposed would encroach on the bluff impact zone defined in, in section 2.10 of the zoning ordinance as a bluff and land located within 20 feet from the top of bluff. The bluff impact zone is a higher level of development protection in the zoning ordinance. See next page for the bluff area standards outlined in section 7.14 of the Cook County Zoning Ordinance. I have those area standards defined in there for you. Considerations, Chimney Rock Plat was created in 2002. A review of the developed lots in Chimney Rock Plat shows no variances have been requested within this plat. Platted lots are intentionally created to support development without the need for future variance relief. Planning staff review of the proposed plat back in 2002 stated as follows. The lots are well sized, especially considering that all drain fields will be placed in the common areas. Bluff restrictions may apply to some of the lots, but there does appear to be a building site on all of them. The permitted development on, the, on three developed lots that has occurred since the plat creation has not required variances and did not have bluff features. The applicant has angled the proposed structure in a way so that only a corner of the building would be encroaching on the setback. While evaluating variance requests, it is appropriate for the Board of Adjustment to consider the magnitude or intensity of the requested variance relief proportional to the benefit to the applicant. From a technical standpoint, perhaps the most significant impact of granting this variance would be the incidental development surrounding the house, the patios, yard, and other supporting development that would increase impervious surface and stormwater runoff within the bluff impact zone. Although decks require permits and must meet setbacks, a patio, which is defined as less than 12 inches from the ground, would not require permits, but would impact stormwater runoff in the bluff impact zone. The zoning ordinance does not does have shoreland alteration requirements. However, they do not address patio placement, yards, or other forms of development around the house. I have listed out the shoreland alterations uh, language from our zoning ordinance, which includes the shore and bluff impact zone uh, language for vegetation removal and screening of structures. And I've also listed some potential conditions for consideration if approved which are as follows. Number one, the property shall conform to Minnesota Rule 7080 and Cook County septic requirements. Number two, intensive vegetation clearing within the shore and bluff impact zones and on steep slopes is not allowed. Vegetation clearing shall be in compliance with section 7.08 of the zoning ordinance. No component of the proposed construction may be closer than some amount of feet from the top of bluff as to be determined by the board. Number four, all future decks or additions shall meet structure setbacks. And number five, gutters and water drainage shall be included on all new or proposed structures to di divert precipitation and snow melt away from the bluff. 
Our office sent out 10 letters of notification to adjacent property owners at the time of writing the narrative. The Cook County Soil and Water Conservation District and North Shore Management Board have submitted comments which are enclosed. The applicant also submitted comments he received from the Chimney Rock uh, Homeowners Association presidents. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the room? Ah, looks like we have motion. Okay. Welcome to the front. Thank you. Proceed at, as soon as you're ready. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I've got one document. I'm wondering if I can put on record. It's actually a document that was part of the package. Um, it's just a survey of the lot, and I printed a larger one because I was struggling to, to see the details, and I thought, well, I did, I'd, I would print some more, and I thought it might be helpful as I described the lot. Could I pass those out? It's identical to the one that's in the packet. Well, we'll see if that's an issue here. Um, anybody on the board have? Are you Mr. Peterson? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't need another map. Okay. I, uh, you know, if it, we it, do, we can. Yeah, okay. At this point, we'll, we'll proceed. Are there any other comments that you'd like to add at this point? Uh, yes, sir. Um, so uh, my name is Eric Peterson and uh, my wife and I, we live in Brainerd full time and um, we've put a purchase agreement in on a lot up in Hovland. Um, if we're able to move forward with the build, our plan would be to build in the next couple of years and, um, and spend about a third of our time up in the Grand Murray Hovland area. Um, the, the Chimney Rock development has 12 lots and I believe it's either five or six. I know there's for sure five homes that are currently built in the development. Um, the lot that we're interested, unfortunately, <laughs> is unique compared to the other lots. And um, it certainly has some challenges um, with building. Um, the lots or the homes that are built in there um, either don't have a bluff um, if they do have a bluff, they're a vertical bluff or low elevation. And those homes, um, I didn't measure them, but just from walking through there, I'm going to guess that most of mm -hmm. the homes in there are less than 50 feet um, from Lake Superior. Um, to build without a variance, um, we'd be well over 100 feet from Lake Superior. Um, if I can ask you to reference the, the, the survey, um, it's a little bit harder to explain versus if we were there. Um, I, I'm not gonna go north, south, east, west just because it's really set at a funky angle. But what I'm gonna refer to or discuss would be the, the right front uh, proposed location for the house and the left front. Um, if you're standing in the proposed location looking out towards the lake, um, the, the lot starts um, with a vertical bluff and then quickly transitions to a rolling bluff and if you look at on that parcel exhibit, um, the bluff setback line is designated and you can see how it starts out fairly close um, and then zig zigzags back um, pretty quickly. Um, the portion of the proposed building uh, would be that small uh, triangle on the um, left front part of the proposed building site. Um, and that would be 16.5 uh, feet from top of bluff. Um, the right front lake side would be uh, 33 feet back from the uh, bluff set back, and it's actually 66 feet back from the top of bluff. So there's a lot of, a lot of movement going on um, with the bluff there. Um, we purchased, or we put a purchase order in on this. Um, Thankfully, we had it subject to a survey because the realtor liked talking about vegetation lines. And after walking through the development, we felt that we would be similar distance to what was in there. Thank goodness um, we did have that. So we had it surveyed. And then that's where my education began. Um, I, I spoke with Neva. Um, she was very helpful to kind of go through the hurdles and, and the concerns with this type of uh, request. Um, so we kind of had to start over. We decided, are we going to try to buy it? Um, we actually tried to put something together without a variance, um, but we just couldn't come to a solution that, 
that we were interested in buying it. So my wife and I, we went out to the property and we basically started where we thought it was and we kept going back and like, yeah, this is, this is great. This is okay. Uh, we could get by with this and they're like, yeah, we're not interested. And that's kind of how we formulated it. We didn't try to say, well, we want this, but we'll, we'll accept that. We really tried to position it where we'd ask for the bare minimum. And like I said, most of the, the building is compliant um, except for that one corner. Um, another reason uh, for the variance request is for sound. Um, the lakeside portion of this lot is um, fairly heavily wooded. And, and then it rolls back into uh, the spring, what I would call a field. Now that things have bloomed, it's kind of a, a blooming brush. And when we were doing our exercise as far as, you know, starting where we thought we could build and then kind of going back, uh, we certainly could notice a difference if we could get at least the front portion of the house, you know, the living room, kitchen, where we spend most time a little bit in the woods. It helps reduce the noise from um, Highway 61. Um, another issue or um, item that was considered in placement, um, this development has, I think, three different drain fields, mound systems throughout. One happens to be adjacent to the property. So if you look at the proposed building site, um, just next to it, there is a, a septic. And although it'd still be next to the property, um, if we were able to get the variance, um, it would basically be visible from the garage and maybe one of the bedrooms, but it would certainly help in that manner. Um, there's, I, re I re review it all, the comments that came back with the packet, um, lots of good information. Um, the one that really stood out to me, and I think it's an easy fix, is, is drainage to the bluff. And I think it's pretty common, whether you're at a bluff or uh, any type of development at this point, that gutters would be required, because um, it would be easy to basically uh, move any water that would be coming off the roof, push it back more into that, that field brush area versus um, approaching the bluff. Um, the lot, and especially the bluff, the, the bluff area, is primarily rock. Um, I was there when they're doing surveying, and I don't think you can get a stick in the ground more than five, six inches before you hit rock. So I don't think um, erosion is an issue, and uh, the area, the variance, even moving out, is really quite flat. The the bluff is pretty gradual up there, um, so there, I don't think runoff would be a, a major issue by any means. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I can't remember, there's either five or six homes that are built in there. Um, I would say they're all less than 50 feet. Um, I guess part of the consideration is we felt um, we weren't too far out of line. Uh, this would help us to be a little bit more in character with what's, what's out there. Um, even with this variance, um, that front left corner would be 60 feet from Lake Superior, and that front right corner would, would be at a, a hundred, or I'm sorry, 90, 90 feet. So, uh, a pretty good distance um, back from Lake Superior. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk um, in detail with the family that's closest because um, the, the family that's closest, the Thompson family, expressed what we were requesting and gave them details on what we were planning and um, they had no concern, concerns and supported it. Um, I've been in contact with uh, HOA president. He's been really good and I've kind of kept him in the loop. And when I've gone up and visited and kind of show him um, what our interest is, and he basically, his really his comment is as long as it's approved by Cook County, he's okay with that. He understands what we're trying to do and is, is okay with that. Um, I understand there isn't a question uh, if you can build on the lot. So I understand that. Um, the variance request is, is really considering the, the practical difficulties of putting a home in a, I guess reasonable spot on this um, and that it's impacting just a small portion that corner um, and that's just once again from the the bluff especially going from vertical bluff to the rolling bluff and how that cuts back the bluff line um, the, the woods trying to get in the woods to try to cut down the noise and of course it does improve the view um, and then trying to get gain some distance um, from the drain field um, and like I mentioned earlier, the, the bluff is, is quite rocky and the little bit of soil there is, it's maybe five, six inches. So I don't see erosion being a problem if, if we direct the water appropriate. Um, uh, I believe 
that this request wouldn't alter the characteristics of the area. Um, there's plenty of shelter from trees, and so it wouldn't be a problem from the lake. Um, and I, um, I guess to my limited knowledge, I don't see it harming the environment. Um, so I guess those are my comments. I certainly appreciate your time. And if I created any questions or you have any questions, I'd really like the opportunity to address those. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there, I'll ask the question even though I don't see them, just in case I'm missing somebody, but is there anybody else in the room that wishes to comment on this particular proposal? Hearing none, I will close it to the floor and the board will consider it. And if we have questions, we'll certainly ask them. Thank you. Okay, board members, thoughts? There's a difference between grandfathered in and vacant lots, right? Are, what's the job? I mean, if there's rules and regulations and we're not going to follow them, what's, why? I don't understand what's going on. <clears throat> Somebody help me out here. Well, the question I have, what, what I'm looking at is you've got 11 feet that consists on the back side of the house that consists of the porch and the garage. And if you hike that house back the 16 feet and uh, took the garage off the house, moved it, made a detached garage, it wouldn't have to stick out. Eight, that's 80 feet of house. Correct. Yeah, and I guess for the record, um, we had them put that on as the um, estimated size that the plans that we're going off of, I believe, is 40 by 66, which includes the garage. And I guess the, just from efficiency, so I think it'd be roughly 40 by 66, but just from efficiency on doing in floor heat throughout and be able to heat the garage, um, that was. But if you have, if you look at the, first of all, the fact there's a purchase agreement has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Am I correct? I believe so. Be. Okay. That is correct. Okay. So if you hike the house back to the bluff <coughs> setback and take off the 11 feet behind for the garage and the porch, you, you only, you're shortening the backside. The front of the house can fit in that spot if the garage is either put elsewhere or shortened or moved back. Uh, I, I have a lot of trouble. I, I don't see any reason why this could be approved because there is a building site that would work. It's, it's personal preference only in my mind. There's nothing more. Okay. And that sounds harsh, but that's yeah, I know how it is. I don't understand why it couldn't just be rotated, like personal preference. Yeah, well, you could rotate it, and it wouldn't be much of a difference if you rotated it. Like, well, I've seen houses that could nip that corner right off. Yeah. You could, you'd have yeah. front side side just live with what, what the ordinance says and either take the corner of their house or move it back. So I'm not seeing that I could approve this. I can't. Any other comments? I can't approve it. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion on this? Tim has got his finger up. Or one thing. <laughs> uh, Mr. Something. Chair, I was just going to say, w with regards, if there is consideration for denial of this, I would encourage you to go through the question checklist. Uh, checklist. Okay. Okay, is the variance consistent with the goals and policies of the Comprehensive Land Use Guide Plan and in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the Cook County Zoning Ordinance? I don't think we 
expression here. Okay. No. Okay, you do not feel that it does, that, that it's consistent with that. No. This is an exception. Are we? Any one of those will deny the variance. And I, I don't. Well, we're going to go through them yeah, all regardless. I, <laughs> it's not consistent. This is the ordinance. Okay. There's, to my okay. knowledge, there's no good reason the ordinance can't be followed. Adam? And. Well, yeah, because like on the other bluffs, stuff that we have approved is because of the practical difficulty. Right, right. Okay. Where on this one, you could turn it almost five degree, pull it back just 10 feet, turn it five degrees, and it'd almost be in the same spot. Mm -hmm. And you're okay. not dealing with... So I answer to number one, I would say no. Okay. Can uh, I, number two. Tim has his hand Can I comment on one thing? Yes. Um, the, the, the building is basically right at the 10 foot minimum. So rotating it, there wouldn't be an option to, to rotate it. So just move it back further. You rotate it away from the 10 foot where it builds that back. From <laughs> the end of the lot. Okay. Well. Tim has his hand up. Well, I was just gonna say with <coughs> regards to those questions, it should, it, we can't just leave it as no, there has to be a, a why know why and so there's some explanation behind why it's a it's a no yeah oh, okay um the, the why would be there is a, a reasonable building site on the property okay all right is the proposed use of the property allowed in the land use district in which the property is located yes okay is the property owner proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the Cook County Zoning Ordinance? Not that we know of. Well, it is a reasonable request because this is a vacation home. But the, the request is reasonable, but we're asking here is the, the use ordinance. of it a reasonable usage of it? Yes. Okay. Um, as the property owner established that the practical difficulty involved is due to circumstances unique to the property and not created by the property owner. I think this is where we have the largest problem. Um, comments? I'd say no, and the reason is it can be situated on the property, either redesigned or okay. moved. Or moved. Adam? I I think you could almost achieve the same thing moving it to the left more and back just a little bit in a slight <laughs> rotation. Okay. So okay, there seems to be a, a, a growing concern here that this could be constructed slightly differently, essentially in the same plot. It would not involve, what was the comment early on? Uh, move it back hundreds of feet from the uh, the most advantageous place it, 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 it you know I'm looking at the map and I'm looking at the profiles the contours and and I've been out there I know kind of what the, the land is like the, you know it's before the the real bluff occurs but it's it's still we've got those lines that come across there and since those lines are not variable, the, there is a variable in there, and that that's and that's that rectangular box. And to 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 everything that I see here, I don't see what prevents it from being moved slightly, even without modifications. I, it just doesn't. I, I'm I'm not saying why it can't be shifted just a little bit on that footprint to avoid that contour line. And number five, we've got... Okay, and number five, will approving the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Um, I'm not... Personally, I don't think it makes too much difference on that. They, they, the, the, the character up there, everything is pretty well separated, so it probably doesn't affect that much. 
And finally, has the property owner established that the practical difficulty involved involves more than economic consideration alone? Well, nothing has been mentioned about the economics of it one way or the other, simply the aesthetics. And so the, the real issue I'm seeing for, for the board is the desire for a certain aesthetic variance here. And uh, I'm not sure that there's a consent from this board there. Uh, is there a motion on this issue? I approve, I make a motion to deny it. All right, it's been moved to deny. Is there a second on that? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to deny the motion as presented. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will assume we're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Um, this one doesn't <laughs> seem to quite make it. That's all right. I, I appreciate your time. Um, right, but it just isn't. Well, wait, wait. Can, can we I make a few comments? your interest in trying to achieve something here. Yeah. But, you know. And you're from Crop Brainerd. You should be aware of all these setbacks and regulations. And I am a, I'm completely aware of all of them, but that's why they call it variance. Um, if I can, I understand. I appreciate your time. I know you want to get out of here. Um, you know, part of the reason I submitted this was after reading the mission statement. And, um, you know, it says, administration of land use controls that guides property development in order to facilitate the growth of local economy, enhance quality of life, and preserve natural environment. When I look at that, I don't, no one has told me that there would be a problem with preserving natural environment. Um, the enhance the quality of life, I mean, I was selfishly going to get that because the location gave the best view and things of that sort, but there's that. Um, growth in local economy, I get it. Nobody needs a business right now. Everyone's so busy, but um, that development has been going for 20 years, and this lot's been available for 20 years, and no one's bought it, and no one's going to buy it. It's, it's a beautiful lot. It's a beautiful area. Well, they but, just change your well, design a little bit. It, it has to do with it has to do with being able to see some of Lake Superior. This this house would fit anywhere on this lot, but you get any further back. I mean, it's even questionable there. I I basically we just kind of took one last run at it to say, well, if we can get this close with this little little corner, that 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 would work. Um, it's the only lot in there that I know that has the combination of vertical and rolling bluff. The lot next to it, they're going to have more of a challenge. Someone's going to have to buy that, willing to pay the price and not even see the lake because that one's so far back. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I mean, I know what it's like to live in a small town. Um, I just, I mean, a variance process, and I guess, I don't know, I guess it, I'm a little disappointed in shutting it down so quickly based upon the mission, but I understand where you guys are coming from as well. Generally speaking, we try to find an avenue to success mm -hmm. on everything. That's, that, that's where we start from. Correct. We don't start out to deny, but we take a look at it, and if we're looking at exceptions to the code, we have to see some compelling reason for it. Yeah, and, and, and that's fine. And, and what I think that we have here is that your compulsion to that place has not been conveyed to us with that same degree of significance. Understand. We were looking for something that we couldn't find there that could justify it. I understand. Uh, so we're, we're, we're a little bit behind. We're, we're, we're not opposed to the concept. As a matter of fact, that, that seems to be a small issue on this whole thing. Now, if you can go back and take a closer look at it and say, can I move this and try that and, and, and then come back and say, here's what happens if we try to do that and, and come back with a more compelling reason to locate it or to find that maybe there is a better way. Mm -hmm. um, that, that happens too. Okay. Um, but we, we appreciate your, your uh, working with us. And, and, and I'm sure that uh, you know, our, our, our services are still there for you. We're, yeah. We would like to help you find a solution for that. No, I appreciate it. And you guys, um, Neve has been awesome, and I've been impressed. She calls back right away. She's been very helpful with information. Um, so I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, I just think 
um, this lot could sit for a while, and that doesn't matter. I mean, open raw land is a good thing. I get it. I just, and who knows, maybe. You got a good architect? Yeah, no, we can. Uh, and and I, I've already thought of some ways that we can change it. It's just the problem is, is I mean, to buy this property for a secondary, it was kind of a dream for retirement, is expensive alone. And every time you change and you add might a corner. It might be time to negotiate the purchase agreement. Yeah, and that's that's what we might have to look at doing. Great point. And that's kind of what my wife and I, we have to basically You've tonight. actually proven that Some you've got to negotiate again. Okay, but yeah. So, all right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully we'll meet again. Hopefully, that'd be great. <laughs> yes, we'd like to. It's been moved to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Done. Okay. Thank you. you. Yep, thank you. <laughs>